Chumbawamba in particular, I just think are so unutterably ridiculous. I'm amazed anybody uh, takes them at all seriously. It's, you know, it's just awful, half sampled, jumpy, shouty tragedy. They're the collection of uh, ludicrous elderly anarchist boars who've been banging on since shortly after the peasants' revolt about how if only everybody would listen to what they were saying and buy their records then we would bring down the global capitalist system. Bands like Chumbawamba and that are a bit daft really, it's like they spent the past three years moaning about the Labour government and attacking John Prescott with water. During 19 years of our Margaret Thatcher they failed to do anything significant about that. Most music journalists tend to be white male middle class and rather boring and they tend to like white male middle class and rather boring musicians. In a way, much though I despise John Wamba, I despise him for their music and not because of the music. Terrible band. They never had an easy time with anybody in the press, that's for sure. I despise the new Chumbawamba, but their old stuff is very good. If you've ever been interested in Chumbawamba, then buy this. But only this, as their other stuff is crap. They were one of those bands that, you know, the enemy would never write about or, or any of the other music press, but there would be a thousand kids at every gig. They could go out and do ten shows in England pretty much any time, and they would sell out. Yet there's some band on the cover of the enemy who can't sell out the Hope and Anchor. I'll drink a lager drink, I'll drink a cider drink. Several probably, and this will still sound like naive political posturing from a bunch of soft middle class student twats. It's a 20 track best of from Norbert No Bacon and his tub thumping toss pot pals. <laughs> I don't know really, I mean it, it quite amazes me how sort of, how worked up they can get about us, do you know what I mean? It's like, God, is this just, you know, do you, can you really work yourself up in such a lather about us, like we're just a band? For the past 13 years this band have inflicted oral torture on the... Sorry. <laughs> you can't write that. <laughs> For the past 13 years, this band have inflicted oral torture on the innocent listening public absolutely relentlessly. Forget revolution, a decent tune would be nice. Everyone should buy this album just to remind themselves that there is music this bad out there. <laughs> That's fantastic. All of the media, the radio and television, all want to feel that they have participated in the success of you know, a band or an artist. And they want to feel that without, you know, us having put them on the cover or without us having done that article, you know, no one ever would have known. You know, they say one thing and they do another and they make appalling music. You know, they're not very good pop stars and they're not very good political activists either. Rubbish, of course, but almost worth stealing for the sleeve booklet, eight pages of band history which for sheer woolly-mindedness pious self-justification and a bull-headed refusal to look truth in the face beats anything you'll find outside the covers of Thatcher, the Downing Street years. Chumbawamba are a one-legged man at an arse-kicking party. We don't fit in with whatever's flavour of the month, which is what all them papers do. They're all about flavour of the month and they're all about product placement. The music press didn't view them as sexy, you know, it was, oh, it's political, you know, they're talking, they're banging on about politics. You know, if some some joke from enemy doesn't get it, doesn't I don't lose any sleep over it basically. People in Germany and you know, Austria, France, wherever, they it, it were like at least they understood what we were trying to do, you know, and they had a bit of respect for it. They might not have liked the record, but you know, at least they were like, Well, yeah, they're an interesting band this lot, you know, they're not like all the other bands. Whereas in, you know, UK we just get totally slagged. Which is great in a way, you know, I'm glad we do. I think it's I think it's good, you know. I'd, I'd get worried if we started getting fantastic reviews everywhere. I think we were doing something wrong. Cool to see the scumba wamba backlash at last. Mind you, I've always called them arrogant, sloganeering, fucking sellout rides on the bandwagon of gay rights, liberal chanting, shit music playing, good for nothing except laughing at fucking corporate whores. Know what I'm saying? And you can fucking print that too. Just make sure you credit it to me. I'm making my position clear on this. That's Russell from Hull. <laughs> Maybe in about 10 years' time when kids are about 21 that are writing for the enemy or something and remember tub thumping or something that they jumped around to at school discos, maybe they'll be forgiven then. What is it that they're not forgiven for, just being political? Or not yeah, for being too clever. The Chumbas are too intelligent for the press, for the music press. 
you know, you always felt really vindicated when you walked in into a Chumbawamba gig and it, it was crammed and there was people outside trying to get in and, and they couldn't and you thought, you know, fuck the music press, we don't need them. Do something about it.